in 2015 when my daughter went missing, uh, she had a two and a half year old son. Um, I've never talked about him before at all on TV. I've kept that very private. But that is changing right here tonight. Bardstown Sherry Ballard has become known for her fight for justice in two cases, her missing daughter, Crystal Rogers, and murdered husband, Tommy Ballard. Now she's adding a third fight, fighting for the right to see her own grandson. Grandparents in Kentucky have few rights, and even those protected by law can't be enforced. Shay McAllister explains from Bardstown. Behind Sherry Ballard's Bardstown home, a swing set built for her grandkids. My grandkids are like my children. Since 2015, she has been raising four of her missing daughter's children in her home as her own. She knew I would take care of her kids. That was not even a decision for me. It was just automatic. That's why she says the court documents claiming contact with her could cause significant emotional harm are difficult to digest. For them to think that I'm some kind of unfit grandmother for my grandson, um, it's very hard for me to, to even think about because I love that baby. That baby is Crystal's youngest son, Eli. He was two when his mom went missing and has been in the care of his dad, Brooks Hauk, since then. My daughter's missing. You know, the, the person that's the main suspect is the father. And I have tried to put that deep down, you know, and, and I do that for Eli, I do. The lengthy custody battle dates back to July of 2015. We're gonna get through it and we're gonna see him. When Sherry Ballard and her husband first filed for custody of Crystal's youngest son, inside the Nelson County courtroom, they wore their Prayers for Crystal t-shirts, coming to court in between searches for their missing daughter, going face to face with the man named as the main suspect in her case. No comment, thank you, y'all have a good day. The Ballards presented their case, citing evidence that before Crystal went missing, they played a big role in the child's life. I just can't understand why we haven't got to see that baby yet. Six months later, a judge ruled Tommy and Sherry could have short visits with the child every other Saturday, but he wasn't allowed to see his other four siblings. I had to come home and tell these kids that lived here, that was his sisters and brothers, that they could not see him. That tore my heart out, you know, to do that. Sherry says she did what she could to make the most of the time. I set up a little mailbox thing that was just for Eli. You know, I put stuff in there and he knew that was from his fairy and he knew that fairy was his mom. The Ballards were eventually granted longer visits, full weekends and even some holidays. And then one accusation put a stop to it all. Brooks told the courts that something was said. Eli came home and told him someone said something about his father in my home on a visit. According to court documents, Hauk testified that after returning from visits with the Ballards, Eli was sullen and uncooperative. The paperwork goes on to say the little boy was accusatory, asking his father, what did you do to my mommy? They just ripped that baby away from me, you know? I, I didn't even get to prove anything. Months later, new hope came with House Bill 517. It was designed to expand the rights of grandparents in Kentucky to create a presumption that a grandparent's visitation is in the child's best interest when there is a significant relationship between them and a parent is dead. But we were having this problem of grandparents being shunned because their child was no longer in the picture. The bill was signed into law in April of 2018. It came at a time when more grandparents were raising their children's children than ever before. Research shows more than 13 million children are living in homes with their grandparents in the U.S. and nearly 3 million grandparents have primary custody. McCoy said in Kentucky, opioids are the reason so many parents are losing custody of their children or forfeiting their rights. But Ballard's case was different. Crystal is presumed dead by police, but not by law. We have no way to know if she's still alive or not still alive. And we have a law that says you're presumed to be dead if you're absent for more than seven years. So we're kind of in this waiting game. Hauk challenged the constitutionality of the law when Ballard took it to court asking for another hearing. He won late last year in the Court of Appeals. Unfortunately, they frequently get challenged on a constitutional basis. 
and a lot of the times they get overturned. Last month, a judge made a final ruling in Ballard's case, writing in court documents there is a risk of emotional harm to the child due to the clear and convincing evidence that significant hostility exists between the Ballard family and Brooks Houck. We've lost another person in our family, and I just can't accept that. Denied any rights to see the child, Ballard says she's done being quiet. What can I lose? How convenient is it of the courts for me to sit here and be quiet and just take everything they dish out to me, and I refuse to do that anymore. I'm not losing anything because I'm not getting anything. Now, she's planning a fight for rights to see her grandson and rights for other grandparents engaged in similar battles. One day, that baby is gonna be old enough to come and see me, and he's gonna know everything I have done to fight for him. And Sherry Ballard plans to take this fight to the steps of the Nelson County Courthouse with a rally plan for this Saturday at two o'clock in the afternoon. It is called the Fight for Eli. Her hope is to raise awareness for the breakdown of the grandparents' rights law and to show Nelson County judges she isn't finished with her fight.